today. It's all about the worst rated makeup from Sephora. Some of these actually don't have horrible ratings and some of them do, but again, this is on this particular product. It's not against a whole brand. Just doing a quick disclaimer here. So let's just jump into it. This right here is by KVD. This is their Shake Primer, $22, and it has an average rating of a 3.2. Some of the reviews are saying my eyeshadow creased worse with this product than it ever did before. They have oily and greasy eyelids and it did nothing. It caused irritation. I have never used a liquid eyeshadow primer before. One drop, okay. And then go in and apply it. It doesn't feel like a typical eyeshadow primer. I'm not saying anything on the eyes. It didn't really do anything. It didn't mattify. It didn't really cancel anything out. So let's move on to the eyeshadow. This right here, is the KVD, the Planet Fanatic, fully recyclable, wet slash dry eyeshadow palette. Retails for $45 and it's an average of 2.3. It seems like it's a newer, newer product because there's not that many reviews, but the reviews on this product are not great. Let's go in with this green shade right here, the shimmer shade. And I think I'm gonna use these wet. I mean, look at that. That's insane. It kind of turn, turns into like this cream shadow. Love it. Wow. That's actually really, really pretty. That's so much pigment. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Is this thing setting on me this fast? Okay, it is. It's actually setting on me very, very fast. Do you guys see this? I'm not really able to like move the eyeshadow around at all. Now I'm gonna take a smaller little blending brush and I'm gonna take this khaki shade right here that's a matte shade. It's called Frag Fragment. And I'm gonna take it right above the shadow and try to blend this into the crease a little bit. So once I'm adding the shadow in here, I'm kind of losing that really beautiful foiled gold shadow. I will say this is somewhat a difficult palette to work with. I'm going back to that green shadow again and just applying it to the outer corner right here. Yeah, I'm not liking how this is all blending together. For eyeliner, we have one by NARS. This one right here is the High Pigment Longwear Eyeliner by NARS, $24. I picked up shade Mambo, Mambo, which is their chocolate brown in the matte finish. Some of the negative comments were, they're very disappointed in this product because they're saying this product right here, you do have to sharpen it, but they used it twice and the actual eyeliner fell out of the pencil, which is not great. We'll see if I can even create anything. And I'm thinking I might not. I think I might need to just use this in my waterline and my tight line. I'm gonna sharpen this and let's see how it sharpens. Looks like it's sharpening. Let's see if it's gonna break. Okay, nice. You guys saw that before, it was a nice little stub. Now we got something. I feel like this eyeliner is adding something to the look that I'm liking. And I can feel the eyeliner moving in this pencil. I feel like if I sharpened it a little bit more, it may fall out. <laughs> I'm gonna take the eyeliner on this brush and just extend it. It drew on really well. It's quite pigmented but I can see that, cause it's like moving inside the pencil. A lot of the comments or reviews where it's a defective pencil, it doesn't sharpen well, it fell out. So a lot of quality wishes, issues with the new formula or the new packaging. Face primer, this is by Too Faced. This is their primed and poreless, pore banishing and blurring face primer. 2.3 average, which is again, a little below average. $35, people are saying it will pill your face with other products that are silicone free, which is very, very particular, very specific review. They're saying because the formula has changed, which is one of the biggest reasons why so many people are saying this is horrible in comparison to the original formula is because for some reason, this doesn't work well with other products. Should we do half of the face? Yeah. Let's do half of the face. Oh, it actually has a little tint, but I don't think it has a tint. It's just the way it is. It's very, very thick. It has a typical primer feel. I think they'll definitely smooth things out a little bit. 
especially from one side to the other. I think this has a little scent to it. It's a little sour, kind of smells a little citrusy. It does have vitamin e, C and E in here. So maybe I'm smelling the vitamin C. I'm trying to use, not use too much of this product because it is so thick. And it kind of has that slippy feel. We'll have to see how this works throughout the day. Because so far I do see a pretty big difference in my skin, especially around the pores right here. But I will say it does have a little bit of that um, greasy feeling, if anything, if I will complain about anything, it's that greasy feeling. All right, so we're gonna skip to concealer just because the foundation, it's a powder foundation. So this right here is by Natasha Denona and this is her Transfix Matte Concealer. This concealer had an average rating of a three and it retails for $28. So why are people not loving it? They're saying that it's the worst concealer ever, doesn't blend properly and leaves your under eyes looking like sand. That's, that's not good. Hopefully we can, you know, work with a little bit and layer on as we need to. Okay, that looks a little bright. And I'm gonna try to work fast just because people did say it dries down very fast. I'm gonna take the second shade and apply it right here on top. I think the second shade just might be my shade, honestly. Oh my, okay, they weren't kidding. You kind of do have to work fast with this product. But where did it go? It just disappeared. It dries on really fast, but then it's like blending into nothing. Even with my finger, the warmth from my finger, it's not helping at all. And now I see what they mean by sand. It literally like breaks apart into tiny little particles right here. I'm trying to make this work by blending it with my finger and sponge, which is what she recommends. So let's put this brush away and continue with a sponge, even with my finger. Like I'm not even using my sponge to help blend this in. And it still looks bad. Like it's not doing my under eyes any, any favor. For foundation, we have one by Benefit. This is their Hello Happy Velvet Powder Foundation. It's a dual coverage powder foundation that retails for $30. I have two shades that I picked up. It has an average rating of 2.7. So some people are saying that it smears, it wears off after just a few hours, and then their skin feels oily by the middle of the day. And it actually looks better once the <laughs> makeup is off the face. For a lighter coverage, apply using their custom brush. So this is the brush. So if you wanna achieve a medium to full coverage, apply using the custom sponge. So a brush for a lighter coverage, the sponge for a medium to full coverage, and then layer and build as needed. So let's start first maybe with the brush and see what kind of coverage we get because why not? And then if we need to, we'll go on to the sponge. Okay, we got something. And let's first start with the no primer side. I'm looking a little bit there. I'm definitely seeing it on my face very close up but it's definitely very, very, very light in coverage. I'm just trying to do a nice even layer. I think this would be good for people that have really oily skin because it is definitely a very matte finish. Grab that. Let's go over the cheek. This is definitely a very dry product and I feel like it's just taken that product off. There is a difference. This side looks Definitely more even. I will say I'm not liking this brush for application. It's taking way too long. I would just use another brush that I like for powder foundations, more of like a kabuki buffing brush because I feel like those, is, those are so much faster. You get a better finish and you definitely get a lot more coverage. I think that's as much as I can go because it's not building up as well as I would want it to and it's all over my sweatshirt now. All right, let's move on to brows. We have two brow products that we're gonna play with today. The first one is by Milk Makeup and this is their Kush Triple Brow Pen. This retails for $22. This has an average rating of 2.3. So why are people not liking this? It didn't create hair like strokes. It has hardly any pigment and it came off with zero effort. I tried it once and returned. I can see why it's on sale. It did nothing for me. I don't think it did, a, I think it got a dud considering the price and reviews. I would give it zero stars. It's super watery and the tip came off. Oh no. All right, let's see what we can create. And there's nothing else. There's no spoolie or anything like that. So we're gonna use it how they suggest. Let's brush up my hairs, my brow hairs. Okay. 
Okay, I'm getting something. What is happening? Color is way off. I mean, I'm just talking about that. This is very uncomfortable to use. It's so thick. It feels like I'm applying water to my brows. I'm trying to use the lightest hand possible. It's a fail in my book for a brow. Wow, that's horrible. Let's just be honest. The brows, they don't look great. They're not great. <laughs> I don't like the color. I don't like the pen form. It's too watery. This is a hard pass for me. So for eyebrow gel, Ilia was one of the worst rated. This is their essential brow, natural volumizing brow gel. Average rating of 2.7, it's $26. I've already actually reviewed this product when I did the full brand of Ilia. And if you guys remember my first impression, I did not like this product whatsoever. But at the end of the day, I changed my mind because of how good my brows looked the entire day. My biggest issue with this product was the applicator. It is so thick, you can't be precise with it. And it kind of just makes it difficult for you. How I basically use it is apply this, I apply this product to my, to my eyebrows and then go in with another spoolie just to really help blend everything in. And that's how I find that it works well for me. And that's what people are complaining about as well is this applicator and how bad it is. But the actual formula is really beautiful. And I feel like also you have to use the slightest hand. A little goes a long way with this product because it does create really beautiful feathery brows. And I do like to use this on its own when I have my brows laminated or when I just want like a no makeup makeup day, but still have something on my brows. But this brush is the worst. I'm gonna take a little eyebrow brush with a spoolie and just very gently just kind of work this product through my brow hairs. All right, let's move on to mascara. So this right here is by YSL. Very expensive, $29 mascara. This right here is their Mascara Volume Effect Full Kills Radical Mascara. Is that, is that how I pronounce it? It's a mascara featuring a new brush and is saturated with carbon black formula that delivers immediate volume for an extra black false lash effect. I mean, that sounds great. Give me all of that, but why is this rated at an average of 2.1, one of the worst rated mascaras. So what people are saying is they got a sample of it, they have really long lashes, but when applying, they got specks under their eyebrow and they couldn't get it off. Oh no. <laughs> so I'm really nervous of what that means. That's a black mascara. That's intense and pigment. And it's definitely wet. All right, I'm not impressed with this mascara, several reasons. The formula is very heavy, so even if you curl your lashes, they're just gonna droop down. I tried cleaning it right here, and it's a really sticky type of a formula. As a person said, it's very hard to take off. So I'm really interested how this is going to be at the very end of the night. But because the formula is kind of sticky, I'm wondering once it sets, if it's just gonna set all day until you take it off. But some people said that it's smeared on them like a smudge. So I don't know what's happening with this mascara, why the formula is so interesting. <laughs> but I do have a liquid gel blush. I wanna see how it's going to apply on top of the powder. So this right here is the KVD. It is their Mod Con Liquid Gel Blush. So this doesn't have too many reviews, but the reviews that it does have, it's an average of a three out of five. $26, I picked up shade Luminary number 50. And this is a lightweight, long wear liquid gel blush for a modern skin look, hydrated and dewy with a punch of color. But what is negative about this is this disrupts your makeup upon application with fingers, sponge or a brush. Just wipes off whatever you've already applied. They say one to two dots. Let's start with one dot. And I'm gonna work it with my fingers. And then maybe we can use a brush on top. Ooh, it's definitely giving that jelly, jelly texture to the skin. And I'm gonna work it with my fingers. It's not super pigmented, but you are getting some pigment there. Honestly, that wasn't bad to blend out. And I actually like how that looks on top of that powder, but it's so sheer. Can you see where I applied blush, babe? <laughs> yeah, a little. Yeah, on that one, that's how I do. Yeah, like very little, right? It looks beautiful on the skin. Like that's actually really pretty, but I can't sit here and say, definitely go spend $26 on this liquid gel blush to get these kind of results. It's so minimal 
and it's just, there are far better blushes on the market out there. And I'm not liking how it broke apart the makeup underneath. And I don't like that there's barely any pigment or blush on my cheeks. All right, let's move on to bronzer. This bronzer is a 3.3 out of five, which is honestly not bad. It's Benefit Cosmetics, retails for $32. This right here is their Hoola Contourist. It's their complete bronze and contour palette. So it basically has all of their Hoola bronzers combined into one little palette right here. I don't know why this is rated so bad. Some people are saying that it's very small and misleading. I don't think that's bad. Let's go in with the original Hoola and bronze up my face, contour my face, you know? Some of the other reviews were saying that the colors are a little bit lighter and they're not as pigmented as the originals in, like let's say if you get in the full size. I only have this one right here, so let's swatch them. This is Hoola Light, and even the texture is a little bit off. Oh yeah, that's definitely very light, and it's not as pigmented as the original. All right, let's move on to highlighter. It's the brand Ink Dot Redible, I-N-C Dot Redible. It's their Hypno Highlight Creamy Shimmer Strobe $10 and it has an average rating of a two. And a lot of people are saying they're very disappointed because it's chunky, it's goopy, it just doesn't really do much. It doesn't really blend well, so we'll see. Very thick, mm, okay. Oh, but once you blend it out, it kind of blends into glitter. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, no. Just like I was saying, it looks like I have glitter on my face. All right, I think last but not least, we have lips. This is by the brand Dominique Cosmetics, and this is her Berries and Cream Liquid Lipstick. Originally $18, now it's currently for not currently for $9. 2.8 is the average review. The one thing people are saying is, they bought it, tried it on twice, and immediately threw it in the trash. It was so horrible and would fade immediately after 10 minutes, and that's not even with drinking or eating. <laughs> Shade is nice, but the tex texture is drying and horrible. And then other people are saying the colors are beautiful and they stay on their lips all day long. So you're gonna kind of like a mixture of reviews here. So I got like a layer and a half on here because this formula is so drying, I don't wanna add any more. And if I do add more, it just, it's very uneven. You can see where I applied it right here, right here. And if I add more, it kind of creates bald spots. I'm gonna take a little bit of this creamy pink and apply in the center and really work it right away with my fingertips. I will say these colors are stunning, beautiful colors. All right, I think I'm done. I don't have any other makeup to apply. I will say one thing about the foundation, not that it's sat on my skin for quite a bit. Right here on my chin, I have like these white little dots on my skin. But overall, I don't look heavy, I don't look cakey. I mean, I don't have that much product on my face to begin with, but it looks good. Let's go on with our day and we'll see how everything is wearing. First update of the day for the worst makeup from Sephora. We're looking really good besides the lips and I'm feeling a little bit, or not feeling, I'm seeing, <laughs> I'm seeing a little bit of the mascara transfer to the lower lash line. They started coming off the lip color after I had a little bit of the tacos with you know grease and just different sauces involved and it's coming off right now. I'm looking at the eyeshadow and the one thing I will say, I can't tell if it's transferring from like the top or bottom portion of my crease, but I feel like it's looking a little bit lighter in the crease. I'm not sure if it's just shadows that I'm seeing or what, but it looks pretty good. It looks like it's staying put. Eyebrows are really good. I feel like the rest of the face is very even in terms of texture and finish. It's feeling a little bit dry right here and I feel like it's because of the powder. I still see my bronzer, still see, or lack thereof, the blush. You can kind of see where I placed it, but yeah. I think what my expectations are, they're being met, if that makes any sense. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys at the very end of the night. Last and final update for the worst makeup from Sephora. I did not reapply the lipstick just because we were going home. I had a late lunch. Eyes, you can see that they have separated. Even the eyeliner is like gone. I don't know where it's been or where it's going. <laughs> Mascara has transferred up there, kind of like what some people were saying, but it also has smudged and transferred to the lower lash line. Eyebrows, 
still intact. Um, looking at my face, like my complexion, I am not looking extra oily, but I feel like oily and I feel greasy when I'm like touching my skin. And you can see a lot of the product has disappeared right here on my chin. I can still see the highlight or the glitter on my face. <laughs> uh, you can still see, no, you can't see the blush. I feel like you can, but you can't at the same time. So overall, most of these products, they're not great, especially for the money. For example, let's go back to the primer. It did not extend the longevity of my makeup. If not to the concealer, it's still horrible. It's even more horrible as the day goes on. It looks so crepey. It looks so sandy, <laughs> as that one person said, which is, at first, I did not understand what they were saying. I'm like, how can a concealer look sandy? But somehow this concealer looks sandy underneath the eyes. Like it just, it exaggerates every little texture underneath your eyeballs or just right here. But it's so also so drying and it kind of just like folds and crepes everything together. A lot of it is not impressive. That's all I gotta say besides that Ilya. <laughs> but I already knew that going into this video. But that's the only product that I have changed my mind about. Everything else is just, it's not worth making a product work if it already doesn't work to begin with, especially if it's a formula issue, not packaging issue. Packaging issue, I can overlook. For example, Ilya. But if the formula is what's the issue, you can't really fix the formula. Do you know what I mean? So that's why a lot of products, they're passed for me because the formula doesn't work. But now you guys, Thank you for watching, spending time with me, and I'll see you next one very soon.